I want to start a brief video on the engine run stand that we discussed at the beginning of the uh, Ford 5 liter motor rebuild. Uh, basically, uh, I'm not going to bore you with all the fabrication. Uh, my daughter is building this as a welding project for the fair. And we're close to being done. At least we're done with the welding, fabricating, those kind of things. Uh, most we have left now do a few adjustments, get the engine on it, uh, get the gauges installed, gas tank, battery, those kind of things. So anyway, the bulk of the the welding is a complete anyway. And of course, it all has to be uh, sanded, cleaned up, primer painted, all those goodies. So this is the dash panel. Uh, went with some uh, uh, aluminum plate uh, and uh, gauges and the like are going to come in the mail tomorrow, we hope. It's going to be, um, I'm going to send, I think, there'll be a master switch, ignition switch panel, gauge panel, maybe gauge panel in the middle. Gauge panel is just the tack. Uh, oil pressure, water temperature, and then also coming in the mail tomorrow will be our radiator, which will out here uh, beneath the dash and in this this space. So we still have fabrication to do there to get the uh, radiator uh, supports complete and in place. So uh, anyway, uh, it's about 30 inches wide. Uh, it's about 60 inches long. I do have a set of plans. Uh, that I used, that I drew whenever I built this thing. I need to make some modifications and improve them a bit, but uh, I'll make those available via email. Uh, if anybody's interested, they can click on the comment with their email or email me through my YouTube channel and uh, be happy to, happy to send you those plans. So let me get you a little different angle here. There we go. It's a bit messy in here. It's hard to get around, obviously. Um, this is, uh, you'll see our welding machine a welding gas, 2575, CO2 argon, bio-steel welding MIG. Uh, this is a Harbor Freight MIG-170 or Chicago Electric welding MIG-170 in the Harbor Freight. And uh, it's doing a great job for us uh, as far as the welding goes. So what do we have? If you look on the engine itself, I actually mounted the down legs on the engine just to test fit them. And uh, they're going to ride uh, here on this bar. Uh, this bar slides back and forth as needed uh, with tightening screws on the ends. And then this will hold the back side of the motor, uh, which is a uh, trailer jack stand uh, that you use to raise and lower the tongue of a trailer. But uh, we modified it and uh, put a um, get over here. Put a uh, engine stand support plate on it so that'll bolt to the back of the motor. In this case if you run a flywheel because of the external balance on that motor so we'll be also we're going to go ahead and run the, the bell housing to protect things from jumping into the flywheel so this will mount to the actual back of the bell housing. And again this piece also slides back and forth on the side rails uh, the side rails here on the uh, on the stand. It's got four casters under it, so it will roll. Hopefully, the wind engine weight and the way the stand's not too much for the casters. No, no, no. We'll see. From here on the front, these two areas that you see, there'll be a battery here, and there'll be a small couple of gallon gas can that we'll use as a gas tank here on this side. So, uh, anyway, that's pretty much. Uh, what it what it takes what it is um, my daughter's <coughs> excuse me my daughter's been learning to weld this is her first welding project so I don't think she did too bad uh, everything's been tapered and then everything was was MIG welded and uh, I think overall she's done pretty well for her first her first welding project we're gonna we're gonna hope the judge at the fair agrees uh, of course so here's the, uh, these, this is what will slide back and forth to give us our length adjustment. And, uh, and once we have the length adjustment we need, we'll just bolt it in place and uh, tighten it up. So next thing, we've got some finish up work to do, get the radiator installed, uh, get the battery and the gas can on here, 
uh, get the engine on here, get the gauges installed up here in the dash panel. So a lot of work yet to do, and we'll come back and give you more as we go. This is the roughed, the roughed out piece, and hopefully from here it just gets better. Well, this is a, kind of the next stage in the process here. Um, the primary portion of the of the engine run stand is complete. Uh, down here will be fuel tank, battery. These are the bottom radiator brackets that hold the radiator in this big square area. Here's the holes for the top radiator brackets. Here's where the dash goes right across there. Um, here is the uh, two motor mounts. Um, actually mounts the motor up here through these holes and then uh, angles outward just to widen the footprint of it a bit and uh, these are the top brackets for the radiator just trying to put some uh, inner tube rubber in there that keep from wearing the radiator out radiator right up there fans and all so uh, we're going to get this thing started together this evening and we'll give it uh, give you an update my daughter's doing really well um, i think her i think her weld work is it's pretty good, and uh, I certainly have no problem running my motor on it. And I'm just hoping the judge at the fair feels the same. She's done a great job between cutting the metal, laying it out, welding it up, fitting it up, welding it up, sanding it, painting it, priming it, painting it. So, yeah, I'm impressed. Uh, if we can keep this uh, keep this going, we should be done in time for the fair, which is about a week from today. It's got to be there. So now a big push is on me. I got a few things left on the motor to deal with. And uh, hey, it's never run. So, you know, always a risk. All right, well, I'll check back with you once we get this thing assembled and we can get a better look at what's going on. Just wanna stop here on reassembly and kind of go over what we've what we've got so far. I know I take videos of my girls and I rest. She just ran to her grandma to get a pair of shoes she ordered. So I'll get her in one of these videos soon. She's, she's here and working, but and she's not here working, I'm on a break. So it gives me a chance to make videos. So here is the, I'll call it the front uh, of the uh, of the engine run stand. Here's the dash. Uh, here we start on this end. We've got a master run switch off and on. I think it's 125 continuous amp rated master disconnect. Here's our tack. Water temperature, water temperature, over temp light. Oil pressure, oil pressure, the oil pressure light, and this is our ignition panel. This is uh, ignition control panel, power indication, uh, on off switch, and then start button. So, pretty much that's the dash. Uh, down underneath the dash, you'll see the radiator. Um, we bought this radiator from Summit Racing, and I bought it, we bought it specifically uh, for its dimension. It's, less than the width of those two risers and uh, once we got it uh, we sized it we were able to place the top and bottom support braces across and basically now it's custom fit two 10 inch fans um, which will get wired into the ignition switch there so as soon as the ignition switch comes on the fans will come on i was going to run a separate switch decided against it not that not that big a deal if you go to the other side now Forgive me, the light's kind of iffy under here, but uh, of course under here you've got uh, all your electrical connections for your switches and gauges and the like. And then here is the uh, back side of the radiator, the radiator cap there. Here's the radiator overflow hose. Comes down beside the gas tank. And then here rests the battery. Um, as far as bracketing goes, we basically created some saddle brackets down here, which have rubber inner tube glued into them to prevent wear if we get any vibration and aluminum on steel and then basically the same thing on top except that these brackets are boltable they bolt off and on so that you can take those off pull the radiator and then when you put it back on you just slip it down into the bottom saddle and place the top saddle on bolt it up so that's working well um so yeah we're Next big step is is wiring. Uh, right before she left, we we started the wiring. We're gonna run our our primary power run up to our master cutoff switch here, and uh, then we'll take our our uh, power off the other side of that switch. Some of which will go to run all these uh, 
Well, that will go through the ignition switch, and then ultimately the ignition switch will power all our gauges. But then uh, another main line will run down to our starter solenoid, which is right there. Uh, we're running an old school starter, so it uh, doesn't have a built-in solenoid on it. So we've got a starter solenoid there. So power will run, the starter power will run from this switch to here, and then from the uh, the one on my right there, that terminal, that'll go back down and back down the frame, and that'll jump onto our starter. And uh, so, from the ignition switch, or from the start button rather, we'll come down to the uh, starter solenoid here, and uh, that'll get us, hopefully that'll get us rotating. So, looking good. Um, now it's just a whole lot of wiring. Once the wiring's complete, step back here a little bit. Once the wiring is complete, then uh, it's time to put an engine on there and see what it'll do. Um, so got a few things coming for the engine. That's my burden, not hers. Uh, engine's mine. Engine run stands hers. So I'm letting her handle hers. I'm handling mine. So I'll uh, get one more video on this when we get a motor on it and we decide to fire it. Talk to you later. Beautiful thing. It is a small block Ford 302 motor. And I'm guessing 325 horses now. Uh, somewhere around there. And this is an engine run stand that Riley built as a welding project. Should I say Riley and I built as a welding project for the fair. And basically the motor mounts on it. And there it is. Uh, battery, gas tank, there's the fuel pump, fuel filter, uh, all that good stuff. This is a uh, an aftermarket fuel injection system. So here's the ignition box, fuel injection power controllers right there. And of course the air breather. There's the back of the gauge set with the wiring and the radiator. All right, I'm gonna stop this thing a second. Well, let me just go over here. So I'm gonna do this. Or you can video I had to excerpt some other video in there because uh, the motor stands now at the fair and we can't run it here because we'll scare all the lambs goats pigs and cows of mine so this is it finally um, it was judged yesterday at the fair she got grand champion in ag mechanics welding project uh, she beat out this trailer and this really nice fabrication stand all very nice projects but uh, I think just the complexity of hers and the fact that it's big unique uh, really kind of gave her a bump uh, she did a great job there's no doubt about that but uh, you know, there's always some factor that has to take you above the rest so uh, I did get an exhaust on it before we got to the fair because we were able to run it for just a minute to show that it worked and then we had to have an exhaust to do that so I put an exhaust on it uh, to do that. I like the video of it running without the exhaust better. It sounds so tough. So there it is. Grand Champion welding project for my daughter. A uh, nice engine run stand for me. And uh, to test my motor on. Motor seems to be running well. I'm happy. Few little problems. Take care of those uh, before we, uh, way before we're ready to put it in the truck, I'm sure. So, we'll end it on the engine and the engine run stand for now. Love it. Glad my daughter won. Uh, tomorrow it goes to auction here at the fair. And I'm just hoping she brings in lots and lots of money. Y'all have a good one. Thank you. Bye -bye.